the price that you pay. You speak to the depths of the voice in my soul. Need you, Lord. We need you.
joining us online or you're watching this later we want to honor your presence online as well what an honor for us to be here to be able to serve you through this also want to welcome every one of us here i know that we are ready to worship the lord amen we are so ready to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords amen, amen. yes come stand the lord be with you and also with you I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the mighty Savior. God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. And the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come on and give glory to God. Oh, we pray.
fights your battles. Jehovah Nissi fights your battles. Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Nissi fights your battles. Jehovah Jireh.
is God. Oh, so worthy, 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 worthy is the Lord. Jesus, you're so worthy. Oh, we praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Spirit of God, come and rest upon your people. It's our prayer that you are here. Feel your room. You 
nothing else but you We were nothing else but you, Jesus Thank you, God Thank you, God Let's sing this together Jesus, Lord, we thank you for a touch of heaven that you have shown us. Lord, we thank you for your presence upon your people today. Lord, hear our cries and hear our petition to you. Church, let's come together and pray for the churches in Sabah. Today, we want to specifically pray for the church of St. James. St. James Anglican Church in Kodat, which is led by Reverend Hilary Aglilalis. In your own way, come let's pray for the church. In your own way, come and intercede for this church to be used by God for His glory. Hallelujah, she Church of St. James Anglican into your hands, O our Father. We thank you, O Lord, this church is used by you to be a beacon of hope to people around Kudat, O Lord, Father. We thank you that this is a church that you have built upon a city, O Lord, Father, and its light cannot be hidden. And we thank you, O Lord, for the leadership of Reverend Hillary, O Lord, Father. We thank you for this man of God who has answered your call to lead this church. And Lord, we just want to pray right now that you will empower each and every members of the church, O Lord, Father. Help them to be generous in their giving. Help them to be, to be intentional in their serving, O Lord, Father. Help them, O Lord, Father, to see you 
through their serving, to see you through their giving, and to see you through the word that is being spread to, Lord, to this church, oh Lord, Father. We want to pray for every cell group that is being mobilized under this church. We pray that, Lord, you help them to be effective in their teaching and learning of the word of God to the people around them, oh Lord, Father. We want to honor each and every leader that has been called to lead the people, Lord Father. We just want to pray for your wisdom and discernment to be upon them, Lord Father. Protect their minds, protect their hearts, protect their eyes, O Lord Father, so that their focus will be on you. When they lead their people, their focus will be on you and nothing else, O Lord Father. We, help, we want to pray that, Lord, you continue to use this church to be a beacon of light, O Lord Father. Expand their ministry. Stretch their capacity, O Lord Father, because we know you have greatest plans for this church. And we thank you that, Lord, your plans are already in motion for this church. We thank you that we get to call you our Father. That, Lord, you have good plans for your children. And, Lord, you're going to use this church to bless more and more people around Kuda. Thank you, God. We just also want to pray for the world peace. We know that there's a lot of things happening right now. There, there's a big war happening. And there's nothing we can do but just to come and seek God and ask for His intervention. Would you come, church, and pray for the people affected in the war? Would you lift your voice and intercede for these people together? Hallelujah. Let's pray. caught in a crossfire in the world of Father. Lord, have compassion over them. Lord, take a look at what had happened towards them, Lord of Father. Every children, every adult who has been traumatized by the war, who has been hurt physically, emotionally, and even mentally, Lord of Father. They are fearful. They are afraid. They do not know what to do. Lord, would you raise people with right resources to help them? Would you use your people, oh Lord, Father, to reach out to them? Would you come and intervene? Intervene. Come and... Come, Lord. Come, Lord, for your people. Come, Lord, for your people who is in agony right now, Jesus. Lord, we want to pray for your intervention. Lord, would you bless them with your comfort? Would you bless them with your peace? Would you bless them with a hope that is beyond all hopes that they can find in the world, would you help them, all of Father, to find the light that can only be found in you in this season of darkness that they are in, Jesus. We thank you for the miracle works that you're going to do for these people. We thank you for the churches that you're going to use to be a beacon of hope and light for the people around them. We thank you for the people that you're going to raise to help them, Jesus. We thank you that you're already working for their good, even though, Lord, we see all harm, all destructions all over the place, all over the place. We see hurt, we see tears, we see destruction, we see all the rubbles, all the dust, oh Lord Father, whatever it is, Lord Father. We can only all see this right now, but Lord, we know that you can see beyond that. We know that you can already see the future that you have for them. And right now, would you strengthen these people, oh Lord Father? Would you bring comfort to those who need it, O Lord Father? Would you come and help them with your love, O Lord Father? Would you come and turn your face towards these people? Do not forsake them, Jesus. We just want to bring hope and light to them. Come, Lord, come, Lord. We thank you for listening to our prayers. We thank you that we get to serve a mighty God like you. We thank you that we are God to call you our Father and to call on the name that is above every other name. We honor you, Jesus. We praise you and we give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the portraits of uh, intercessions, why don't we just spend 30 seconds to just remember in the past few days all the news from the war, all the death. Let's just spend 30 seconds of silence to remember them in our heart.
Lord, we thank you for present, and indeed, life is so precious. And we thank God that we're all able to gather together here. Be with us, Lord. Be with all the people that were affected. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And welcome to Faith Christian Centre Saturday evening service. In this moment, um, it's so precious to have everyone to be here from uh, tomorrow, from works, from busy schedule. Why not we just walk around and welcome each other saying that, good to see you here this evening. Let's go. to see all of you and I noticed we have some visitor and uh, we, I saw uh, Sharon and Rachel's father welcome uh, joining us again and uh, those who keep visiting us joining us even you while you are traveling through KL and we warmly welcome you and also especially want to welcome those who are first time joining our service this evening may you uh, you might just wave your hand we want to Im uh, give you some precious gifts welcome it's brother oh, they welcome to you yeah. And uh, thank you, Lewe. Say welcome. Who else? Anyone else? If you are first time joining us this uh, very evening, anyone? Those joining us online, please come and join us uh, physically in Sunway. Uh, we would love to welcome you. And please stay back later. Uh, we'll welcome Corner. I really want to meet you personally to know more about you and welcome you with some drinks and also biscuit. And first announcement before that, uh, you can scan this QR code to assess the sermon outline and also the event announcement uh, slide for more information of our church activity as well. And right now, for the very first thing, we would like to uh, witness together for the lay reader licensing, uh, Lee Yi Zheng Victor, Liu Xiaoyan, Michael Lim Zi Wei, and Tan Zi Ho Joshua, and also Raymond to be on stage. Uh, Joshua couldn't make it due to our station of work, and all of us will be witness together to, uh, for this renewal of lay reader license. Well, they are waiting to, uh, to read the canonical obedience and just uh, to let you know this uh, weekend is very excited because uh, we are going to witness uh, 18 of our new, uh, our lay leaders to be licensed and also they are also out of the 18, you are four lay leaders. Let's give glory to the Lord for 18 lay leaders. And maybe some of you are wondering, maybe you have been Anglican for many, many years, you don't know what is lay reader, you thought lay reader is someone who lie down and read, that's not lay readers. So lay reader is an Anglican term, uh, term used uh, by those uh, members, we call lay person, not that they lay down and, and, and do something, but there's lay person, that means ordinary member of the church, licensed by the bishop to assist the priest, to assist a pastor in the Anglican church, either for example, in the Diocese of Saba, so the, la the, the lay leaders are giving license to either to lead worship service or to read Bible and or to, uh, to, to, to preach and also to distribute Holy Communion. So this evening, we are going to uh, witness three of them uh, to say this, what we call the canonical obedience to the bishop. So I represent the bishop to be the witness and also sign the, the deeds and also uh, the letter. And then I will, on behalf of the bishop, I will pass the, uh, the letter to them. Uh, so, uh, so they are going to read the canonical obedience uh, to the bishop. Let's start with uh, Victor. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Wei uh, Xiaoyuan. Yeah. Hi, Liu Xiaoyuan. Hi, Michael Lee. Hi, Victor Lee. Of Faith, Faith Christian Centre, Petaling Jaya, Jaya, in the Diocese of Saba. Applying to be licensed by the bishop to perform the office of lay reader in the said diocese, do hereby declare that I am in communion with the Anglican Church and that I ascend to the Book of Common Prayer, the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons, and the 39 articles. I believe the doctrine therein set forth to be agreeable to the Word of God and in public prayer and administration of sacraments. I will use the form in the same book prescribed and none other, except so far as shall be allowed by lawful authority. 
and I promise that in the above office, I will not knowingly teach anything contrary to the doctrine of the Anglican Church, and that I will conduct myself agreeable to the order and discipline of the said church, and comply with the lawful regulations and instructions set forth by lawful authority in the diocese. I, Liu Xiaoyuan. I, Michael Lim. I, Victor Lee. Do swear, do swear that, that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of Saba and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Help you. Yeah, on the behalf of the Bishop of Saba, I present this license to our brother Victor Lee Yizhen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Michael Lim Zivei. <laughs> and Liu Xiaoyan. Yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we're going to give you thanks for the leader that, Lord, you have blessed FCC. We thank you, Lord, uh, for Brother Victor, for Brother Michael and Xiao Yan and also Joshua, that, Lord, you have called them to serve you as a lay leader, Lord, of this church. We pray we continue, Lord, to grant them, Lord, your grace to serve you and continue, Lord, to use them mightily for the extension of your kingdom, Lord, in Subang Jaya and even beyond. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In a big, another big hand for all of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Such an amazing uh, journey. And that day, Victor uh, doing announcement, advertising my licensing. Now my turn, uh -huh, Victor. Okay. Um, also want to thank the so families that who are supporting uh, all these gentlemen that who are serving as leaders and your support and family uh, prayers definitely also play a very big role to their serving. And uh, next, we have a zone prayer meeting which is happening uh, just two days later, which is on Monday. Let's come together. And then, um, no, last, last round of prayer meeting is almost packed the room. Not yet overflow. Let's overflow it this coming Monday, all right? So uh, let's give us a, a full until that. We need to think of how to fit in more people in the room. That is our challenge. But we would love everyone to join and pray together. And also not only pray for the newly licensed lay leaders, and also pray for the world, pray for family, and pray for the surrounding, and most importantly, pray for church as well. So I want to see you there. And children are welcome. Those parents with children come and uh, loving. would love to really pray with them and play with them also. Uh, yeah, she really can pray. And also uh, Hopper as well. Next, very excited. We are have FCC ATIE program 2024. Yay. Dr. Linky, I can't see. Okay, um, this is the extension program. We are open for new applications uh, right now and the registration of interest ends on 30th of November. Why uh, ends? Because um, for the coming later, I will share with you more about the uh, register of interest. It's because we have this promotion from ATI from this year of uh, register from 1st of April to 31st of December. There will be 50% discount for the application, for new application, for new applicant. That you never register before, uh, you will have a 50% of the 100 ringgit discounted. Then you only need to pay 50 ringgit. However, 
we want to aim higher for those who have 10 new applicants, right? The whole application fee will be waived. So in FCC for ATI Extension Program 2024, we aim to have at least 10 or more uh, members or applicants to join us to kickstart uh, for this. Then you have free applications um, for this ATI. Are you excited? So what are the coming? Uh, the first subject is about the introduction to the Bible. Uh, yeah, I, I do join, I do sub, uh, sub, sub, uh, uh, attended this subject uh, back to more college, but in Chinese version. Uh. It's very interesting. That time I only know Chinese. And then I also can score around 50, very marginal. Right? But right now, I think I have more technology, more, more materials. It should be very smooth. But most important is a community. That time I have few members to join together, to study together. That really makes the the whole thing different when you are doing theology. So FCC, we want to do theology and journey with you in a community in this service as well. So if you are really interested, scan this QR code, uh, register your interest because we want to get all the information and then we will give you a timing when you can register before 31st of December. Actually, individually, you can register via ATI website because it's an extension program, so we'll, the ATI will coordinate with the church and how many students, then they can uh, provide the tutors to come over to conduct the classes. So uh, if you want more information, you can contact me. Uh, you can see me later on or you can just scan this QR code. You can get my contact later. Are you going to join? How many of you are interested? Can you put down your hand? Oh. <laughs> Anyone? Okay, how many? How many interested? We have 10 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 more, 6. Okay, online you like that? Oh, you're already done now. Okay, okay. You're not, you're not new applicant anymore. Um, who else? I see a lot of... Uh, keep praying. We have a few months to think about it. <laughs> Next is building fun. Uh, we want to uh, just update everyone our building fund uh, as of today, since September to October, we have collected 36,752. Give glory to God. It's very amazing and as of today, total we have collected 67,000. You know, uh, the situation, the economical situation in Malaysia is not that great, right? Everything is just, uh, uh, increased price and you know the budget just came out and you know in China State, it's a very bitter coffee with a little bit of sugar for 2024. But with that, we're also able to collect this amount. And there are some updates in progress. I will let that good news share by Reverend later. He is very excited. And um, for this two coming weekend, we would love to, uh, to share with you that the G2 QR code, which is right now the next slide, you can scan this QR code right now just for building fund. And also, I want to remind, if you would love to uh, contribute your tithing and other offering, you can scan the QR uh, behind the chair that uh, you can see in front of your chair the QR code or you can give cash via the bag we'll be passing through later or you can do direct bank in direct transfer indicate G1 in the description to indicate you want to give your offering and tithing and meanwhile if you would love to give a uh, building fund you can just scan this QR code right now or if you prefer bank transfer you can indicate as G2 as well while you are preparing the giving, I want to uh, just share a testimony. This few days is a very packed days. Uh, just a few days ago, my girlfriend just being informed her dad was fainted in front of the toilet and then we rushed back and then noticed that uh, it was a minor stroke. And all of, uh, uh, she told me that her hand was shaking while traveling to, to rush to Panghang. But we were, don't know what happened and we were in the emergency in Tamalong Hospital waiting and then cannot see doctor. They say need to wait for two or three days. We will feel like helpless. Don't know what is really happening, the diagnosis and what caused the stroke and what caused the fall. Any injury that has happened, no one know. But thank God, in Yes, just this morning when I uh, get update from Elnis is that after we have prayed for our uncle, the doctor reported that um, the uncle, because of the left brain, have the minor stroke, they call poor stroke. That should, uh, you will cause the right side of the body to you not know, get infected. But he said that after they test the therapy, left hand and right hand, left leg and right leg, it's almost the same strength. 
it seems like never get stroke effect before. In our prayer for the for the uncle, for Ernest's uh, dad, we were only saying that uh, pray that he will able to recover. He will be able to recover. But the doctor says something amazing is that um, the stroke seems like being undone. I said, wow. I didn't know my, my prayer. I mean, our prayer never stopped. Like, undone the prayer. Uh, undone the undone the prayer. Undone the stroke and let it like experience nothing at all. But that's really above our imagination about our prayer. And I want to thank you, each one of you, who join us in prayer. And please continue to remember Elna's father. And not only her, her father. I think many of you have parents or uncle aunties who in need of prayer. Remember them. And when you pray for them, remember that God will do something that beyond our prayers. Because He's a merciful and good God. And not only us, UMC also pray uh, for Elna's family as well to support them in prayer spiritually. So when, when our travelling to Pahang, we are not alone. We have many churches, many prayers supporting us. And that's only can be done because you all are involving. Amen. So when we are giving, when we are praying, when we are serving, when we are knowing, uh, knowing more about this God, uh, let's have this faith element in us while we give that uh, in, among all circumstances that we believe that the Lord will do something unexpected in our life. So let's give with the cheerful heart. Let's pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own to be with you. Amen. Let's prove our heart for the word of God. The scripture reading is taken from the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Ezra, chapter 1, verse 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the law spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, the king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. And in any locality where survivors may be now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbours assisted them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with valuable gifts, in addition to all the free will offerings. Moreover, King Cyrus brought out the articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his God. Cyrus, king of Persia, had then brought by Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Shizbazah, the prince of Judah. This was the inventory. 
gold dishes, 30, silver dishes, 1,000, silver pans, 29, gold bowls, 30, matching silver bowls, 410, and other articles, 1,000. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold on, of silver. Shiz Baza brought all this along with the exiles when they came out from Babylon to Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Church, let's stand for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 to 22. Together, glory to you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his word. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity, that you, you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and ran away. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we give thanks to you that this evening, Lord, we can gather here in your name. Lord, as we prepare to listen to your words, we ask you, Lord, to help us and we ask you, Lord, to serve up our heart so that, Lord, each one of us will love you more dearly and see you more clearly and walk with you more closely day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, my dear brother and sister in Christ, the Lord be with you. So once again, we want to congratulate our four, our three lay leaders who are licensed today. Once again, let's give a big hand to every one of them. Thank you so much for offering yourself to serve the Lord, to serve in FCC as a lay leader. Two weeks ago, I was invited by a good friends of mine that we serve together in an organization called Malaysian Campus Crusade for Christ. Malaysian Campus Crusade for Christ celebrated their 55th, uh, 55th anniversary uh, two weeks ago. Now, many Christians in my generation probably have heard about the uh, four spiritual law and uh, Jesus firm, which are related to Campus Crusade for Christ. How many of you heard about four spiritual law? Very interesting, uh, we are different generation, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, so uh, four spiritual, probably in my generation, probably in the 90s and 80s, probably you've heard about four spiritual law. Now, at the peak of its ministry, Campus Crusade for Christ International has more than 6,500 staff mem members all around the world and thousands of volunteers sharing the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. Just the Jesus firm alone during that time had done more than any evangelistic effort during that time to reach billions of people on every continent in the world. Now, Campus Crusade for Christ was, uh, was started by this person, the late uh, Dr. Bill Bright. And God stirred up in his testimony, God stirred up his heart and opened his eye to see the vision to reach out, to reach out the whole world for Christ. And what he saw, he saw the whole world was his parish. The whole world was his church. So when God stirred up a person, a person can do something really beyond what we can imagine. So today we want to begin a new sermon series on the book of Ezra. You just finished the book of Haggai. Haggai talk about when the people return, God called this prophet for, called Haggai. And then today we are going to start another book, uh, also talk about the people who returned to Jerusalem, but this is more a historical book called the book of Ezra. Together we say the book of Ezra. So the book of Ezra, of course, are Ezra, so we have to introduce this person. Ezra is a priest. Ezra is also a teacher of the law. Uh, Ezra is also a scribe. What happened uh, to him was that uh, as a priest, he lost his job. He lost his job for how many years? He lost his job for more than 50 years. 
The reason, because he was unable to serve. Why he was unable to serve the people, the Jewish people? Because they had been taken into exile in Babylon. So the temple uh, where he's supposed to, to work, the temple has been destroyed and uh, there was no more temple in Jerusalem. So, so he lost his job for 50 years. But that did not uh, make him lose his passion to continue to see God's people return to the Word of God. So if God stirred up Haggai, that's what we have heard a, a few weeks ago, if God stirred up Haggai to encourage the people to rebuild the temple of the Lord, God used Ezra to bring spiritual revival to the people by encouraging them to return to the Word of God. So one of the key words in this book is found in Ezra chapter 9, verse 4, and Ezra chapter 10, verse 3. What's, what's uh, Ezra uh, 9, 4? Is it Ezra 9, 4? Is it there? No? Okay, let's read together. This is one of the key words. One, two, go. They tremble at the words of the God of Israel. And I pray this evening, I pray as we begin this new sermon series that the Lord will stir up our heart. The, heart, the Lord will stir up our spirit to love the word of the Lord. Now, the, word, the, the book of Ezra can be divided very easily into two sections. Into two, two sections. The first, from chapter 1 to chapter 6, talk about the restoration of the temple. The first, section, first part of the book talk about the return of the, the, the Jewish people from Babylon under the leadership of Zerubbabel. And then the second part of the book from 7 to 10 is about the reformation of the temple. Uh, that's where uh, the people return under the leadership of Ezra. So we have to begin with the restoration of the temple. The restoration of the temple began with God. God is the one who stirred up the king during that time, King Persia, to allow the people to return to Jerusalem and to build the temple. Let's read together verse, chapter 1, verse 1. Together we read 1, 2, go. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. So we note that at the very beginning, right away, Ezra emphasizes on the word of the Lord. So when God's timing arrived, God stirred up the king during that time, king of Persia, to proclaim to all to his kingdom, and not only to proclaim, not only orally, but also put it in writing. Give a notice to the whole nation. And this is to fulfill, not coincident, not coincident but this is to fulfill what uh, 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 Je uh, prophet Jeremiah has spoken many years ago. And God promised to bring His people back from exile and establish them once again in the land. So the prophet, uh, prophet uh, 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 Jeremiah has foretold this, that the exile will only last for 70 years. Together we say 70 years. So I want to show you that is the prophecy of Jeremiah in 25, 11. I highlight the word 70 years. And not only highlight the word 70 years, because in the following uh, a pro a prophecy, Jeremiah also say, times will come where Babylon will be punished and Judah will also restore in Jeremiah 29, 10. The Bible say, I will bring you back to this place. And then God also, through the prophet of Isaiah, also prophesied that even King Cyrus, let's look at Isaiah 44, 28. So I highlight the word Cyrus. Together we say Cyrus. So Cyrus will be used. This is also prophesied. Even the king that will be used by God to bring the people, to allow the people to return to Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple, was also prophesied, but also been spoken even before it happened that Cyrus will be used by God to issue the decree and also to allow the people to return to their land and to rebuild the temple. So when God's time, when the times came, the Bible says, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. So God took the initiative, God took the first move to make this thing happen. Many years ago, when I was in Sandakan, I was the, uh, the chairman of the Sandakan Inter-Church uh, Committee. And uh, every year, 
uh, except during the pandemic time. So every year, the Australian, you know, the, the high commission and, and some of this uh, family of the soldier who died in the World War II, they will come to Sandakan in the month of August. I think just uh, two months ago, they just uh, uh, had it called the Sandakan Memorial Day. The Sandakan Memorial Day is a special day to remember those who died in the World War II. And I, as an Anglican priest, so as has a privilege to be invited just to say a prayer. That prayer also already written one. Uh, you cannot add one. Uh, so everything you just follow. So in that, that event, wow, all the big shot, the dignitary, the high commissioner of Australia, and sometimes the, the, the British and will come. And of course, you have all the local dignity, uh, dignitaries like the uh, YB and the local council president and all this, all those big shots in Sarakan, you will see them in that event. And, and what happened was the event uh, was held in the jungle. If you know Sandakan, you know Sandakan Memorial Park in Mount Egg is a jungle. And not only that, the event was held at 5.30 a.m., still very early. So when you walk into the jungle, literally, you, do use, you use torchlight, of course, you use handphone now. And I was there, and, and when my time come to say the prayer, I tell you that time, I really struggle. Why? Because they give me the, the, the service order, they give me the prayer, but the contrast of the paper and the wording uh, make me so difficult to read. And I have a problem, I strain my eye, I strain my eye, I try to read. And everybody waiting for me to read that prayer, to say that prayer. You know what happened? I was so steady. Take out my handphone and on the, on, on, the, on the torchlight. And then I say the prayer. You know, after the event, everybody thought I purposely did that to observe a moment of silence. I thank God I was only asked to, to say a prayer, less than 30 second prayer, but something similar happened to a preacher. A preacher, when he delivered an evangelistic message to thousands of people, just like me, he also strained his eye to read his sermon. And this preacher, he held the paper so close to his face, and not only that, he, reached, he, read, he read each carefully prepared text. The text that he prepared and in a monotonous voice, not like me. Monotonous voice because of what? Because he had very poor vision. But what happened was God touched, God's spirit moved through this person. Of course, some of us probably have heard about his name. It's Jonathan Edward. God moved through Jonathan Edward in that evangelistic meeting. You know, Jonathan Edward has brought a great revival in America and to fan the revival fire of first awakening, of the first awakening, and to bring thousands to faith in Christ with that sermon. Hallelujah. So God can use unexpected things to accomplish His, purpose, His, His perfect purposes. God can use every one of us. If God can stir up someone, if God can use Jonathan Edward, who, who just read the sermon, so monotonous, not like us, jumping up and down, and not yet, there's not so much on what we can do, but what God's Spirit can do through us. Amen? So if God can stir up a Gentile king to fulfill his perfect purpose, if God can use Jonathan Edward, who had problems, struggle to read the sermon, the text, and yet many come to know the Lord, brother and sister in Christ, I have a good news for you. I have a good news for myself. God can surely use His children, you and I, to accomplish His purpose. Together we say, Amen. Now, many of us who are here long enough, you know, uh, because of five, four years ago, uh, the FCC staff have done, uh, the FCC member have done a very wonderful uh, video about the history of FCC. So this year, uh, next year, we are going to celebrate our 30th year anniversary. And what happened was uh, 29 years ago, God stirred up a group of young people from Sabah. Uh, this one, you know where I get the picture. <laughs> yeah. So 29 years ago, God stirred up a group of young people to begin a small group in SS2. And the Diocese of Sabah during that time was so concerned for the member who came over to study, who came over to work in West Malaysia. But I want to say to us, brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those from Sabah, so God was more concerned for them, for His people, than anyone of us. 
God wants to use, not, uh, the, use the Sabah Han to come over to West Malaysia because when I, when I went over to Sabah, I see the people in Sabah, they are so blessed. Many of them, actually, people that I met, even though they are non-Christian, but they are already exposed to Christianity because they study in, in mission school. And they already know the, the Lord's Prayer, they have already attended Bible class and all this, yet they are not Christian. But here in West Malaysia, you know, I, I met people, I am a West Malaysian, I only heard about the gospel at the age of 18. Only 18 years old, I heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But many Sabahan actually already heard about the gospel, maybe not one time, many times. Some of the Christians over Sabah, when you come over here, we are here not only to reach out to our fellow Sabahan brother and sister in Christ, because God also wants our church to reach out to the West Malaysian. Together we say, Amen, especially the Sabahan, one, two, go. Are you Sabahan and say sang? Okay, the Sabahan, one, two, go. You know, today you and I, we reap and enjoy the fruit of the labor of the member in the past. And most importantly, Father, uh, uh, brother and sister in Christ, I want to remind us, every one of us, that God is the one who took the initiative to move this group of young people to accomplish His purpose. So what unexpected things have you seen God do in your family, in your workplace, in your college, even in our nation? And how you will make yourself available to God when God wants to accomplish something through your life. So when the exile have uh, when the exile when the exile happened 70 years ago, when the Babylonian conquered Israel and destroyed the temple, oh so slow. Uh, second picture, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is of course the reason. Uh, no, the picture before. The picture before. Okay, the next one. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Before, before. Before, this after, right? Uh, this one more, right? I think after this, there's another picture. Oh, uh, one, two, three, right? Oh, only two. Only two pictures. Okay, never mind. Show that uh, the big one. Uh, 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 not the one I would. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What I want to say is that we reap the harvest. We reap the harvest of the people in the past that have, that have labored, and today we reap the harvest. So I'm going to continue. So uh, 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 when, when uh, uh, 70 years ago, when the exile happened, when the Babylonians came and destroyed the temple, no one would have expected the mighty Babylonian empire would collapse and one day replaced by the Persian empire. Nobody would have expected the pagan king, King Persia, will give an order to allow the Jews to return to their homeland and rebuild the temple. The Babylonians were a great empire, the most powerful empire of their time. But there's nothing permanent in a human kingdom. Earthly kingdoms do not last. Together we say earthly kingdoms do not last. One, two, go. So earthly empire have shelf life. Earthly empire have expiry date. So consider the third right. And now you can show Hitler. Okay, everybody will look, look, at, look for your face is it just now, right? Yeah. So uh, I mean, you heard about the, the third right. You know, the third, third right, the third empire, which Hitler and Nazis refer to as the 3,000 years right. That means right means 1,000 years empire. They say the empire would last a thousand years. But as we know from the history, if you're interested, you can read the book, The Rise and the Fall of the Third Reich. As we read from the history, we know the empire of Nazi, empire of Hitler, only lasts for 12 years. Barisa national government did better than them, at least 60 years. So the Babylonian empire did not last forever. A new power, the Persian, were rising up in the north, and in time, they overtook this Babylonian, Babylon the Great. So what kind of faith can be placed in people and nation? So in our time, it may seem that we are at the mercy of our government, just like the Jewish people were at the mercy of the Babylon. But it is the Lord, not they, who is truly in charge. Let's read together Proverbs 21, verse 1. One, two, go. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and he directs like a water course wherever he pleases. So the Lord keeps his people, 
the Lord protect His people at all times, and in due time, government change, then the people of God return to worship. How did it happen? Because God stirred up the heart of the king. So not only God stirred up the king, but now we move on to the second point, God stirred up the people. So let's read together verse 5. One, two, go. Then rose up the heads of the fathers, houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levite, everyone whose spirit has God stirred to go up to rebuild the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. I want you to take note, not all of them, because some of them, they decided to stay back. Not, some of, not all of them to see the importance of responding to the preaching of the prophet. Not every one of them are ready to fulfill what they have promised to the Lord to rebuild the temple. So not every one of them. So only some of them. Who are those some of them? That those who spirit, spirit God, uh, those spirit God has stirred to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. I believe when you listen to the word of God, Every one of us, you hear the same message. But not every one of us, we are ready to receive the Word of God. Not every one of us receive the same stirring. Just now, I, on my way to, to the church, I'm talking about, I, 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 start, I, 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 I keep on thinking about this word stirring. It's, as a preacher, it's very important to have this kind of stirring in your heart. Uh, I was taught as, uh, by my teachers, theological, I mean, my, my, the one who taught me how to preach, he said very important as a preacher, you know, how to preach is one of the things you might have stirring in your heart. That you stir, stir, stir in your heart. Huh? You want to say out already, you know. Even before you come in, huh? I, uh, quickly, I want to come out here. I want to say something because there's something very important. God wants to speak to the people. God wants to speak to, 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 the, uh, to His people. And therefore, there's a stirring in your heart. So when you come out here and preach, that kind of stirring makes you to come up here and then you, you know there's something God wants to use you to speak to His people. And we want to thank God because God has prepared a group of people to return to Jerusalem and build the temple. Not everyone, only those that God has stirred their heart. So brother and sister in Christ, our God does the same thing Today, he moved and he prepared the people to do his work. He, do, he, he prepared and also he moved the people to serve him and he, do, and he also moved and prepared the people to worship him. I'm very thankful to the Lord for FCC. I thankful, I'm thankful because God had prepared the FCC staff and the congregation to serve the church and his people during the very challenging time during the COVID-19 pandemic where physical meeting is not possible. So when we plan to, 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 to record our sermon, so uh, all the cell leaders, now every week you will see uh, a handsome face like uh, Pastor Tim and also uh, Pastor Enoch already. Uh, uh, only just two handsome, this one not very handsome one, huh? Okay, so, uh, uh, so when we start to record, because uh, we start to record the, 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 the short uh, video, the short sermon for the, for the cell leaders to facilitate the discussion, all the equipment, all the resources, all the software are already ready for us to use. And three weeks ago, we started to send out sermon video and pointer for discussion for all cell leaders to help them to lead the cell group more effective. Now, this is only possible because God has already prepared His people to do the work. Let's give a big hand to all the staff that you have helped to do this. Uh, let's give them a big hand. Thank you so much. And just on, on, on Wednesday, I attended a seminar. I attended a seminar how to pastor a church, how to pastor a congregation in the post-pandemic uh, era. And the, 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 the speaker is also the uh, principal of one of the theological institution in Taiwan. And this is what he said. He said, what we need in the church is not only high-tech. He said, what we need, not only high-tech, but we also need what? High-touch, he said. So not only high tech, but we also need high touch through our cell group gathering. So I want to encourage us. So I want to encourage you to belong to a cell group in FCC. 
So grow together in the cell group. Learn to practice what you learn in on Sunday or Saturday and apply the word together and encourage one another in the cell group. So learn, learn together. Learn the word of God together. So with all the high-tech gadget that we have now in your hand, so let us not forget to have high touch to connect with one another. I just want, like this phrase, just make sure you disconnect to connect. Okay? Make sure you disconnect and then you connect with others. I want to give thanks to the Lord because I started the cell leaders uh, training for the Chinese first for two, two sessions, four hours, about four hours session. So in the Chinese, we had 27 leaders and interns sign up for the training. Hallelujah. Give glory to God for the Chinese. And last week, uh, I started because tomorrow also after the BM service, I just uh, don't know where I get the, all the energy. After the BM service, 4 o'clock, then 5 o'clock, uh, we, we, will have, we, we started our training. So yesterday we started, uh, 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 last Sunday we started at 5 o'clock, then it ends around uh, 7 o'clock. And tomorrow there's another training for the BM. I'm so encouraged for the BM cell leader and intern. We have more than 40 people registered. Let's give glory to the Lord. But I am also very excited because the English will begin in November. Hallelujah. No, no response. Man. Yeah. Not that I saved the best for last. I somehow, so that's not in order. But I want to pray that uh, the English also, we have people are ready to be trained as cell leader, are ready to be refreshed as cell leader and intern, in, in turn, why? Because I want to prepare FCC for a greater growth. Give glory to the Lord. I don't see it, but I prepare first. I tell the Lord, Lord, you give me 1,000, then I prepare more leaders for you. And I want to take this opportunity also to thank all of us on behalf of the PCC. Thank you so much for your generous giving towards the building fund. And God stir up our heart to give generously to the work of His church. As I said, there's nothing about spiritual and material. Everything is spiritual. The building are used to serve the people so we can serve God through our giving. So good news for everyone. Just yesterday, we awarded the project already to a contractor. God willing, this coming Monday, the contractor will come and start work to replace the roof and also the awning. Let's give glory to Lord. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, in Ezra chapter 2, verse 64, the Bible recorded Recorded very important. Every member, every member, every week, we have a number. We have the number of people uh, who come to service. Last week in our Saturday service, we had more than 170. I think we have 172. Is that correct? Huh? One, four. Oh, we had 147. Last, last uh, Saturday, we had 147 in our Saturday service. Let's give glory to the Lord. 174. And in the BM, we have 180 in our BM service. Let's give glory to the Lord. Now, why I say this important? Because every number represents a person. And out of that 146, one of them is, is uh, Michelle, I think. Shirley, sorry, not Michelle, but uh, Shirley. Uh, one of them is uh, Caroline. Out of that 146 on the Saturday service, one of them is Caroline. So 4,342,336, 4, every number represents a person and every number re re represents a soul. And the temple has been destroyed. Generation has gone and gone. So when the temple finally built, only some of those old men could remember the previous temper. So they cry, the Bible says, they cry when they compare the, the present temper with the temper that they have seen in the past. But many of the priests and the Levites, head of the father's houses, old men who have seen the first house, wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundation of this house being laid, though many shouted aloud for joy. But God was faithful to His promise. Something unthinkable had happened. The Jews had returned from exile and built the temple with all the expenditure paid by the pagan king. 
I'm not sure whether in your experience, sometimes you think that if you work with Christian, or sometimes if the counsel is a Christian, probably you can have more convenient to work with. But I can say to you, this is not true also. Sometimes work with non-Christian better than work with Christian. Because Christian also depends on what kind of Christian that you're working with. You're working with Christian who already honor the Lord, who really love the Lord, they'll be different. Sometimes even work with non-Christian, even as a pastor, I work with many uh, uh, leaders and even uh, uh, community leaders. Sometimes work with non-Christian is, is even easier. Why? Because the non-Christian, they, they, they respect the, the pastor, they respect the church. They have all this uh, uh, respect for, for, for the church. And uh, do not think that uh, a Christian uh, uh, will do more if they become government. Or a Christian uh, will do more if the Christian become boss or become the leaders in the community. I would say not necessary. It may happen, but do not give 100% hope. Because God can also use non-Christian to bless the church. Together we say, Amen. Because we also, in Sabah, we also receive grant from a, 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 a chief minister who is non-Christian, but we also receive grant from a chief minister who is a, a Christian. So God can use Cyrus, a Gentile king, to bless the people. Not only to bless the people with all the expenses, but the king also ordered to give back all the treasure of the old temple that, that, that taken away by the Babylonian and returned to the Jews. And in chapter 1, verse 11, he also gave the number. He said, all the vessels of gold and silver were how many? 5,400. The vessels included those sacred vessels that taken away by the Babylonian. So this, all this treasure has been kept by the Babylonian in their treasury, but now everything will be returned to the Jews. So our God, our faithful God, not only kept the people, kept the people, kept His people who were ready to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple, but God also kept the treasure and all the sacred vessel that has been taken by the enemy. And who gave the order? A Gentile king. <laughs> Something that unthinkable happened when God stirred up even a Gentile king to do something to fulfill his good purpose. I begin with the story of Bill Bright, founder of uh, Campus Crusade for Christ. I want to end with a testimony how Campus Crusade for Christ has been a blessing to me. How God has stirred up this man many, many years ago. He has been called home to the Lord 20 years already, but he has served many, many years. And how this person who was stirred up by the Lord to see the whole, whole, whole world was his parish and how he has become a blessing to me when I first become a Christian. First blessing, I pray and receive Christ using the prayer in four spiritual law. <laughs> Second blessing, I was discipled by the staff of campus, Malaysian Campus Crusade for Christ and also discipled by the volunteers of the Malaysian Campus Crusade for Christ. Third, my passion for the loss began when I signed up, when I involved in the mission trip organized by Malaysian Campus Crusade for Christ from 1992 to 1990. 96. And my involvement, my experience in the mission trip contributed to my calling to serve in the full-time ministry because I see the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are very few. I see the harvest is plentiful. Maybe there will be less one engineer, you know, all this is okay. It's less one doctor is okay, but out there, the harvest is so plentiful, but the workers are few when I went to one of the mission trip. Fourth, Campus Crusade for Christ has also led me to bear my first fruit of discipleship. I want to show you a photograph that I took in the celebration. The person uh, uh, at the center there is my first fruit. 
I'm the, I, I brought him to Christ. I discipled him for four years. We stayed together in one house. I discipled him, and this is my first fruit. And of course, I didn't manage to take photo of, uh, uh, of my, this is considered my spiritual son. I have also spiritual grandson, uh, but he, he didn't come. But the person next to her, I told this friend called Phuc Hing, I said, call her your great-grandmother. Why great-grandmother? Because he, she disciple a person, and this person disciple another person, and that person disciple me. So this is your great-grandmother. So this is my great-grandmother, but you call her great-great-grandmother. Why? Because Miss Wong started this ministry in Bido many years ago, disciple those my senior, many senior, and I am one of them, and this is my great-grandmother. I want to show you another photo with my permission of my wife. And uh, the person uh, next to me, that's the one my disciple me in the University of Malaya. And that's why I say this is a second generation because he, he was disciple another person who was discipled by Miss Wong. And that's the one we graduated together. So I disciple and then uh, uh, and, and they disciple uh, me and then I disciple another person. But the girl next to me, I did not disciple her, I marry her. <laughs> I think no need to uh, show already. Uh, close. Uh. <laughs> and I want to thank God because God stirred up the heart of these people to take the Great Commission seriously, to take Jesus' last word, His most important commission seriously. And today, I'm here to serve you. And today, I'm here to preach to you. God stirred up my heart when I come here to see His purposes for FCC being fulfilled. I see how God can use this church. I see so many potential people in this church. I see so many people that have been trained up and you go into the college and you win the campus for the Lord and you win the world for the Lord today and also tomorrow. Someone interviewed Dr. Bill Bright, talk about the great dream and also the great vision that he had. And his response was always the same. He said, we serve a great God. Why should we ask him to do less than great things? <laughs> That's very, very challenging. He talked about great vision. He said we serve a great God. Why should we ask him to do a less than great things? So we serve a great God. Hallelujah. I pray that God will stir your heart, whether you are young or old. Two days ago, I saw this quote by Colonel Hallett Sander. Just because you took longer than others doesn't mean that you failed. I started KFC at 65. I look at you, every one of you, you're less than 50 years old. I seem to be the oldest here. Sorry, I know, just joking, right? You're not too old. You're not too young to do something great for the Lord. So I pray the Lord will stir your heart. You just need that stirring. You just need that moment, ding, moment, uh, your whole life will be transformed. You will never be the same. So may the Lord stir your heart, stir your spirit to do great things for Him, testify and glorify Him. Amen. Together we pray. Let's pray. Let's come before the Lord to reflect our own journey, our own Christian journey, from the non-believer or even from a Christian family, how the Lord has brought you to this point in your life. Think about the people that God has placed around you. Is it not because they obey the Lord? Is it not because they take the Lord's command seriously? the great commandment and the great commission seriously, to love God and to love His neighbor and to go and make disciples of all nations? Is that not because they have 
taken God's command seriously. And that's why you and I are so blessed because of them. So now we have received the baton. We have received the blessing. We do not want our life to be like a dead sea. Only water go in but cannot go out. We want to be a channel. Whatever blessing that we receive, some of us already overflow with blessing. I want to challenge you. I want to pray for you that this evening the Lord will stir your spirit, stir your inner being, that you know you want to do something greater for the Lord. You want to do greater things for the Lord to accomplish His purpose. When the Lord stir you up, maybe not this evening, maybe tomorrow, maybe a month later, maybe next year, you are ready. When the Lord give you an assignment, and the Lord give you a task to do in order to fulfill His good purposes.
evening, we want to essentially pray. I have burden to pray for all the students. I see all our students, you go to your college, it's not only to study. Of course, uh, we pray for the working, working uh, adults and those are working, but the student, because I was a student, I also study in university and, uh, and go through colleges, college, and uh, I know how important that period, because that's the time that I build up my spiritual life. And that's a time that I, I prepare myself to enter the, the working life. And that's a time that I learn about Bible, learn about discipleship, learn about leadership uh, in, in, in college. And I know I, I went to the college because I asked a lot, Lord, I only want to enter one university. That's University of Malaya. <laughs> no other. But if you let me in, Lord, I will just serve you there. And the Lord just let me to serve in the campus ministry. And that's where I learned about leadership, learned about discipleship, learned about how to care for people, learned about work integrity, almost everything that I need to learn uh, to enter the marketplace, I learned in the campus ministry. Because at the very beginning, first year, I already committed that I want to learn and I want to serve you. So I want to pray for all the students. They're not here by coincidence. Maybe you already final year or third year. That's not very important. It's not too late because um, KFC founder only started in 65 years old. It's not too late to, to begin. So I want to pray for, for you. And uh, what I'm going to do is that uh, those are students, uh, I want us to put your hand. And uh, I want those who are working, you have gone through life, you have gone through college, and you know what to pray for them. You know what uh, the struggle, and uh, you want to pray for them, that uh, the Lord will use them pray for what they are going through in the college and I want those uh, working adult around them just go to one student or one a person or wear a hand and pray for them right so uh, you want to pray for one another uh? so if you are a student put put your hand and, and, and if you are not put your hand don't mean you are not a student uh, huh? very obvious uh, huh? okay <laughs> can you put your hand and and, and ji gao gao, put high high okay so uh, then we pray for you yeah we pray for you go go around and pray for them those are working i want you to pray to encourage them you know if you can find someone can you just pray for them as we just uh, sing the song softly just pray for them just pray for them yeah just go around i want you to just pray for the student put their hand yeah just pray for them just just sing softly the song then we continue to pray put out your hand yeah pray for them pray for them i want you to pray for them Go and look for a student. Someone put up their hand. I think there's one there. Uh, Victor. Spirit 
Francis Gaga, I want to pray for you and uh, thank you so much for those who are working adult. Thank you for your prayer for all the students, the college students. And, uh, and uh, we also want to pray for all of you. And I just want to encourage us. I pray this evening the Lord will stir your heart to see just like the student, you are there not only to earn a degree but also a crown from our Lord Jesus Christ. Likewise, for all the working adults, you are not there only to earn a living but also the to have a crown of life. So go out there. I pray that the Lord will stir your heart that you go out there as a missionary because you are going to meet people that I will never have opportunity to meet probably. Yeah, because you see them in, uh, in and out and uh, from 9 to 5 o'clock. So God has sent you there with a mission. I pray this evening the Lord will stir your heart knowing that every time, every day, when you go out to work, you go there with a mission. That pray for opportunity, pray for that Kairos moment that the Lord will open door for you to share with them, to share your life with them, and of course to share Jesus Christ with them. So let me just pray for you. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, how you have touched people, you have touched their spirit, you have touched their heart. Lord, we have witness how you have touched even the Gentile king to do something that is to us is unthinkable, to allow your people to return and to build the temple for your glory. And we thank you, Lord, because you also stir up your people to respond to your call. And today, Lord, I pray even for my brother and sister in Christ that are in the marketplace. They are out there, Lord, from Monday to Friday, from 9 to 5. They are out there not only to earn a living, they are out there not only to find a job, to do a job, but they are out there as your children as a missionary that's sent out by you to fulfill the great commission so father i pray that lord you will use them to use them lord to be your powerful witness wherever lord you send them i pray that lord through their testimony through their life even lord through their performance in the company that will truly draw people not to them but draw people to you so, Father, I pray for your favour upon each one of them as they seek to honour you because your word say you will honour those who honour you. So, I pray that, Lord, you will help them. You also deliver them from any harm and danger. Deliver them from any temptation from the world, from the devil and from the flesh. And we continue to pray even for the student. Lord, we thank you that they are here this evening. Lord, we pray you will stir up their heart knowing that, Lord, they are there not only to earn a degree, but also a crown of righteousness that you have already prepared for those who have hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's open our heart to receive the blessing from the Lord. May the peace of God be past us all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and your loved one now and forever. Amen. Brother and sister in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ, Christ. Amen. Amen.